Is he the greatest hero of the First Age? Is he the most cursed man in Tolkien's Legendarium? Or could he actually be both? The man is Hurin of the House of Hador, and in this video we delve into his life. Hello and welcome to the Broken Sword. Today we are looking at the man, Hurin Thalion. Hurin Thalion would be known by the name The Steadfast for the great will he would show when under the torture of none other than Morgoth, and he was one of the characters who had their story, and that of his children's too, published by Christopher Tolkien after working on unfinished materials that his father had left behind. It was actually considered to be one of the three great tales that J.R.R. Tolkien worked on during his life, having actually started this one back in 1918. And for those of you who are interested, the other two of these are Beren and Luthien and The Fall of Gondolin. But anyway, let's get back to the man at hand, as Hurin was considered to have lived one of the most tragic lives of anyone in Tolkien's works. So that is really saying something. But just why is this? Well, let us take a look at the life of Hurin today to come across just why he is considered the cursed man. Hurin Thalion was born in the first age of Middle-earth in the year 441 in the lands of Dorlamin, and this land was located in the southwest of Hithlum, where at one time Fingon had ruled, but later would be populated by the men of the Edain, and this is when Hurin would come into things. He was born to his parents of Galdor and Hareth. Galdor led the people of Hador, Hador being his father and Hurin's grandfather, when they were at their strongest before the events of the Neneath Anodiat, and he was nicknamed the Tall, for his great height even amongst these tall men. Hurin was coming from a very strong line of men. His poor luck would start though when he was only 17 years old. He and his younger brother Huor would join a warband party, but they separated from them during an ambush at the Vale of Sirion, which is located in Beleriand and where the Valor Ulmo used his power and helped protect the whereabouts of the city of Gondolin. And this is how the brothers managed to make their escape from this event, for Ulmo raised a mist to hide their gateway. The two brothers fled into the region of Dimbar, which was considered an empty land, and from here they were helped by the eagles, who flew them to the gates of the hidden city of Gondolin. This was the sign of potential great events, for there had been a prophecy that the children of Hador would come to the aid of Gondolin when they most needed it in their darkest time. So King Turgon took the brothers in with open arms, where they remained for roughly three years, until, after swearing an oath of secrecy to never reveal the whereabouts of the city of Gondolin, Hurin and Huor were sent back to Dorlamin at some point before the year 462. When Hurin and Huor would be back in Dorlamin, there would be an attack by the orcs on the wells of Ithal Sirion, which was the great spring of water, and here Hurin's father Galdor would be slain in its defence. Hurin managed to drive off the orcs though and return home, where now, being Galdor's eldest son, he would now become the third Lord of Dorlamin and the seventh chieftain of the House of Hador. In the two following years, Hurin and Morwen Aledwen of the House of Beor would fall in love, and they would come to marry. Their firstborn would be a son, Turin Turambar, and he would be born in the year 464 of the First Age. Their secondborn would be their first daughter, born in 466, and her name was Erwen, but later she also became known by the name of Lalea which meant laughter, for she had such a happy nature. And then their third child, their last child, would not be born until 473, and this one would be another daughter named Nienor Niniel. But to rewind slightly at this point, their daughter Erwen, she would not be long for this world, for she would die of the plague when only three years old, and this really had a lasting effect on their son, Turin. But Turin's story is really one for another day and one well deserving of its own full video. If we continue now in time to the year 472 of the First Age, it came the time for the Battle of Unnumbered Tears, 
also known as the Neneath Anodiate, and as well the Union of Mithras, all of which we do discuss in greater detail in our video about the Wars of Valerian, so if you want to know more please go check that out as well. But this ends with Fingon being slain by a Balrog, and Hurin, along with his brother Huor, convincing the surviving King Turgon to retreat and go back to Gondolin, with the aim to keep the secret of Gondolin just that, a secret. So to help this retreat, the brothers and their soldiers performed a mightily heroic act. They were willing to sacrifice the lives of their men and themselves, and so they formed a blockade across the Fen of Serek, which was a marshland between the lands of Dorthonion and Ered Wethryn. And here their men were completely annihilated by the Orcs of Morgoth, and here too, Hurin's brother, Huor, also fought his last battle as he took an arrow to the eye and drew his last breath. But as for Hurin, he fought with such ferocity that the forces of Morgoth, despite their unwavering numbers, could not bring down this man. The number of orcs and trolls that he killed was in the end unknown, but the only way that he was stopped was that the weight of the corpses that fell beneath him eventually became so great that it pinned him down. Being unable to fight on, he was then taken, captured and bound, and brought to the Dark Lord Morgoth himself, where he was then tortured, and all of this for the secret of Gondolin's location. Which means the prophecy would come true. Hurin, despite the torture, would not break, and so the children of Hador had saved Gondolin, at least for now laying down their lives and withstanding more than almost any elf, man or dwarf could take, or for its secret. Morgoth became enraged by Hurin's strong will, and thus laid a curse upon him, and all of his kin from that point on as well. So, from this point, Morgoth chained Hurin to a chair on the slopes of Thangorodrim, where, due to the powers of Morgoth, he was forced to watch all the tragedies that would come to befall his family. Which, in essence, is what the story of the Children of Hurin really covers. So on a side note, would you actually like us to do a video on a book summary of this story? I know many people struggle with some of these readings, and some of you don't even know about the Children of Hurin at all, so maybe instead of listening to an audiobook, you may perhaps prefer just a quick summary of all events that happen in it in however many minutes it may take me to do so. So leave me a comment below of the Children of Hurin in, with adding how many minutes you would like to see it in, and I can get working on that for a future video. But I will also note the audiobook read by the legendary Sir Christopher Lee is well worth the listen if you do have the time. But anyway, enough of that, back to Hurin. 28 years is how long Hurin had to sit and watch his family be ruined by Morgoth's curse, and that is literally all he could do, just sit and watch it all unfold, unable to do a single thing. The torture that this must have been to Hurin is unthinkable. His second daughter, Nienor, was actually born shortly after he was captured, so Hurin would miss basically everything of her growing up. But you may ask, what about his son? Well. Turin tried to take the fight to Morgoth, but this actually led to the downfall of the stronghold of Nargothrond in 495 of the First Age. It was Glaurung the Dragon that destroyed this city, and this was all due to Turin's counsel of meeting the enemy forces in open battle. Both Turin and Nienor would meet their deaths by suicide, and this would be in the year 499 of the First Age. Nienor was first, throwing herself into the gorge of Cabot and Arras and Turin shortly afterwards threw himself upon his own sword. Tragic ends for both of these beings. And it was then here, after these events, that Morgoth finally let Hurin go. He was now a broken man. Hurin would wander in search for any of his kin, and even the city of Gondolin, but to no avail. That is, until Turgon decided he would let him enter, and sent for eagles to carry him to the city. However, with Hurin approaching the land near to where he knew that Gondolin would be. This ended up being enough for Morgoth, for he was still watching, the curse still loomed over Hurin. So Morgoth now knew, at least roughly, where he could find the last of the hidden kingdoms, and this would lead to the events of the fall of Gondolin. 
Hurin would continue to wander, eventually reaching the forest of Brethel and coming across the graves of his children. But he was not alone there, for he would get to see his wife, Morwen, one last time here, but only for a short time, as she would die not long after their meeting. He buried his wife and then continued to wander with the curse still over him, which meant wherever he went, bad actions would follow. He passed through the settlement of Ephel Brandia, the home of the people of Haleth, who had previously housed his son Turin before his death. However, Hurin was just full of anger and hatred for his grieving, so he caused conflict within this settlement, which really just led to the ruin of Ephel Brandia. The curse struck again. Hurin would then continue on to where Nargothrond had once stood, where amongst the ruins he came across the petty dwarf Mim. The same Mim from the children of Hurin's story who had betrayed his son Turin many years before. Again, Hurin's hate overcame him and he killed the dwarf, taking the treasures that Mim had plundered, which included the Nauglamir. Which, if this does not sound familiar to you, we do cover what the Nalgrimir is and what it caused in our video of why the dwarves and the elves hate each other. So please check that out for more information. But then, from here, Hurin, leaving death behind him wherever he went, continued on to the last great elven kingdom of its time, Doriath. Hurin would enter the city of Menegroth, which was the home of King Thingol and his wife, Queen Melian, who was a Maya. Full of bitterness, he threw the Nauglamir at the feet of the king, angry and bitter for them not helping his son. However, Melian stepped in here and finally managed to break Hurin of the curse that weighed on him for so long. Hurin's grief and anger left him, and all that came over him then was shame. He apologized for his actions and gifted the Nauglamir to Thingol, now as a true gift, a memorial. And from here, he decided it was best for him to just leave. However, although the curse was lifted from Hurin in a way, it still loomed over him to a certain degree, which meant that this land that he had entered, he was a contributing factor to the later destruction of Doriath itself. There would then be little more to Hurin's life after this point. He would wander until he reached the Western Sea, which was also known as the Great Sea, and from here, no longer able to cope with the utter despair that he felt within him, he took himself into the sea and drowned. And so, in the year 502 of the First Age, Hurin's life came to an end. So there we have it, the story of Hurin Thalion, and from going through his story, I'm sure you can now understand why he is known as one of Tolkien's most tragic characters, and really is considered to live almost an entirely cursed life. I believe he is a really interesting character, and his story is such an incredible one to really delve into, albeit with not so many nice parts to hear about. It is even one of those stories that I definitely think could make one hell of a film or series if they ever came to it. Really so many things in the first stage I'd love to see, but Hurin at times may be a great place to start if you want to go for that darker look. And also as just a reminder, if you do want that summary on the Children of Hurin story, which again could make its own film or series, then please leave me a comment of the Children of Hurin in with however many minutes you would like to see me actually summarise it in. And I will get working on that for you of course. So now this is where it is time for my question of the day, which is, do you think any other man could have withstood the torture that Hurin did at the hands of Morgoth? Whether you think of the likes of Aragorn and Boromir, or Beren, or even Turin, could any of these manage to do what Hurin did? Let me know all of your thoughts and opinions on this in the comment section below. And now it's time to shout out our patrons. You guys are the ones letting us make our short film in the background of all things, and I cannot thank you all enough. Firstly, we have our Divine Power tier members of Kevin and Abram, you are both awesome. And a big thanks to our Fire Demon tier members of Nasheath, Denver Steel and Gregory, you are amazing people. And as well, I cannot forget the Wizard Staff tier members of John, Andrew and Jennifer. You are all true legends of the bro hero. And finally, if you have managed to reach the very end of this video with me today and you have enjoyed what you've seen, please consider hitting the subscribe button and the bell icon with all notifications ticked so that you'll be notified of all future uploads, or maybe just drop in a like or a share of the video as well. Any of these things massively help out the channel. And so, thank you for spending just some of your time with me today, and I will see you next time 
on the Broken Sword.